that's immediately when I saw it. I thought, well, that's pretty much Albi. It's been two years since voters decided to replace Joe Albi Stadium, and tonight we get our first look at what it could look like. Plus, the pressure is building. Mayor Nadine Woodward and Commissioner Al French says it's time for our economy to fully reopen, but health officials say the data disagrees. Well, temperatures were sure chilly during the beginning of the week, but we're warming up just in time for the first day of summer this weekend. Good evening and thanks for joining us here tonight. I'm Regina on live here in the newsroom and Mark is in the Creme 2 News Studio. Hey there, Mark. Hey, good evening to you, Regina. I want to get straight to our top story tonight. Spokane County saw another double digit increase in COVID-19 cases. The Spokane Regional Health District is also reporting more hospitalizations. And while there is increasing pressure to reopen the local economy, Regional Health Officer Dr. Bob Lutz maintains that Spokane County is not yet ready to move on to phase three of reopening. I can't project when we are ready to go there, but the fact that I'm still getting 10, 15, 20 cases a day, whereas prior to Memorial Day, we were getting oftentimes single digits, that's concerning for me. And so we're not ready to go into phase three. Dr. Lutz says substantially more testing is being done. Now, according to the health district, people who are not showing any symptoms of coronavirus can now get tested if they've been in close contact with a confirmed positive case of COVID-19. Another big question we've seen in recent days, whether we would see a big spike in cases related to recent protests where thousands of people were gathered closely together downtown. Well, the health district says it has not seen any cases in Spokane County related to the recent protests. Meantime, the Spokane County Board of Commissioners has now signed a letter asking health officer Dr. Lutz to take immediate action. They want to begin the process to move ahead in reopening the county. We think that some of the major metrics that are required uh, have been met by the county and stuff. So we're anxious for the uh, uh, health officer to uh, uh, weigh in and uh, uh, move us to that next phase. Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward says she hopes to talk with the governor about loosening state requirements for phase three of reopening. She adds that neighboring counties are also now in phase three. Meantime, over in central Washington, Yakima County being called the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak in Washington state. Yesterday, Governor Inslee went to Yakima calling on local authorities to do more. So what are local leaders there saying? Well, first, let's talk about the current situation. Yakima County has 250,000 residents, but has more than 5,700 COVID-19 cases. That's second only to the much larger King County. Yakima County is home to a large agriculture industry where a big portion of the workforce is considered essential and the virus has taken off among those workers. Now, despite that, County Commissioner Vicki Baker argued the county remaining in phase one isn't slowing the spread of coronavirus. The county said that some local businesses are on the brink of permanently shutting down. However, Yakima's mayor said the city had distributed tens of thousands of face masks this week through local grocery stores. Meanwhile, others say they feel it's a positive sign that Governor Inslee visited Yakima County. The area is the lone Washington County that remains in phase one of the state's reopening plan and doesn't have any modifications. Meantime, Idaho entered phase four of reopening last weekend and Regina, you're tracking the latest coronavirus data out of North Idaho. That's right, Mark, and tonight in By the Numbers, let's talk about the Panhandle region and Idaho State. It's been four days since Idaho's stage four of reopening of Governor Brad Little's Idaho rebound rebound plan and since then we've seen the first COVID-19 related death in Kootenai County. But let's break down some numbers to see if any numbers have spiked since. Kootenai County right now has 105 cases and one death. Benoit has 12, Bonner with 10, Boundary and Shoshone have zero cases and zero deaths. Nine undetermined cases are what officials say is a positive case with no county information to back it. In Idaho State there are currently 3,258 confirmed cases 88 deaths, 61 confirmed cases today. Again, confirmed is different from the probable number that you might see as well. And the majority of those cases, about 908 of those, is between the ages of 18 to 29 year olds. 30 to 39 year olds make up the next highest majority. So if we see this graph here, we will see Idaho's numbers and the Panhandle region side by side there. Idaho in orange and 
and the Panhandle region in blue. And the Panhandle region, as you can see, is doing all right right now. In the last 32 days, the highest number of cases that we've seen was back on May 29th. They saw seven cases that day. And the graph shows that the numbers continue to go down. There was a tiny bump up on June 5th when the region saw six cases, but still, again, relatively low. The 14-day moving average shows the Panhandle region doing pretty well there as well. You'll see those lines going up a bit towards the end, um, the middle of June there, June 13th and June 6th. So if you see those numbers from the last month, really, we didn't really hit a lot of cases. The most that we've seen was eight cases in one day in the last two months. So overall, Idaho is still doing a really great job. So keep it up there. And turning the page now to weather, we got a taste of summer like weather today, but there was uh, some thunderstorms as well that we all felt and saw. Michelle Bonds joining me live from her home tonight. So Michelle, what's in store for uh, this weekend? Uh, well, it does look like we still have an outside chance of a shower, but it's not going to be too bad. Temperature wise, it's looking really good. We finally started to warm up this week and it looks like the temperatures are going to stay warm for the weekend. So here's a look at Saturday and Sunday. Uh, on the downside, it does look like we are going to be dealing with mostly cloudy skies, but still making up to 75 on Saturday, 76 on Sunday. Outside chance of a shower on both days. Of course, Saturday, the first day of summer, and Sunday is Father's Day. On satellite and radar right now, we're seeing pretty quiet conditions. We had some of those thunder showers move through right around the dinner hour, late afternoon, early evening. Most of those have fizzled out and pushed far off to the southeast and are dissipating. So it's going to be pretty quiet during the overnight hours. Partly cloudy skies expected. Temperatures may dip down into the upper 40s before warming up again. It looks like a pretty good amount of sunshine for tomorrow. An outside chance of a shower. That would be mainly across north Idaho into northwestern Montana, high 75, Friday partly cloudy, 78, and again for the first day of summer, mostly cloudy skies, but temperatures pretty good, highs in the mid-70s. Regina? All right, Michelle, doesn't look too bad. I can't wait for this weekend. Well, two years ago, voters decided to replace the aging Joe Alvey Stadium. Now for the very first time, we're getting a look at what that replacement could look like. Here's Krem 2's Casey Decker. Food trucks, grass seating, a playground, and a selfie platform. Those are just a few of the unique design elements in the proposal outlined before the Spokane School Board. The current Joe Alby Stadium is 70 years old and holds nearly 30,000 people. But its primary purpose is prep sports, where attendance rarely exceeds a couple thousand. Such a large stadium requires a lot of maintenance and a lot of parking. In 2018, voters decided it was time to replace it with something more manageable. They approved a nearly half billion dollar school bond measure by a wide margin. Of that money, about 30 million is going towards replacing Joe Alby. They also overwhelmingly voted to keep the stadium in Northwest Spokane rather than move it closer to downtown. And despite some last minute alternative proposals to build a venue downtown anyway, the board has remained firm in its stance they'll be going with the voters. Now we're seeing what that looks like. This stadium design holds just about 5,000. Board members said they liked how it retained that Joe Alby feel. There's a lot of uh, great memories out that way. So that's immediately when I saw it, I thought, well, that's pretty much Albie. Um, that's wonderful. It includes the amenities you'd expect from a sports venue, locker rooms, press box, concession stand. There are a lot of designated drop-off areas to keep traffic flowing. And there are some more specialized components as well. One of the main goals of the design, to further enhance the sense of identity the stadium provides Spokanites. And one way of doing that, large lighting structures that can change color to represent each of the district's high schools. I like the branding. I, I, there's a lot of potential there, not only for SPS, but um, many other groups that are going to be using it. There's still a lot of design work left to do before construction can begin. If everything goes smoothly, that would happen spring of next year and the stadium would be finished by June of 2022. But COVID-19 could play a role in that timeline. The architects may actually make changes to the design that could help improve social distancing or otherwise prevent the spread of disease. They're hoping to get some guidance on that from health officials by September. I'm really curious to see what we'll be able to do um, related to the pandemic and sports. I think that's a big, big question mark. If that doesn't happen, construction could be delayed until guidance is provided. Casey Decker, Creme 2 News. I really like the idea of changing colors. That looks really cool. Well, coming up here, four leaders of the Spokane County Democratic Party resigned last Saturday. Still ahead here, we explain what led to those resignations and what's next for the local Democratic Party.